Hey y'all, welcome to Rico's Garage. Here in the shop again with our 12 valve Cummins. If you watched the video last week, you seen where we drug this thing in here. Got our thousand dollar Cummins going and I revealed to you where that engine is going. For those of you that didn't watch that, shame on you. But here's the spoiler. This engine is going to go in our 3 plus 3. We've abandoned the 8.1. We're going diesel power. So, like I mentioned in the video earlier, we have no use for this truck. It's garbage. But the engine is still good. So, we're going to harvest the engine, intercooler, rad, condenser, throttle cable, some other knickknacks. We're going to harvest all that out of here. Um, really, the only other thing left to sell is going to be that automatic transmission. I'm going to sell it as a core because I know nothing about it other than back in my days working in a transmission shop we rebuilt a lot of these things and I'm not going to tell somebody it's a good transmission when I don't know anything about it and looking at the rest of the truck now so that uh, transmission I'm not even sure if it's a 46 or a 47 RH I haven't looked at it that close to be honest with you but if you're interested drop a comment send me an email uh, core price it's yours the rear end is a Dana 80 with pause attraction, so you know, 355 gear. If you're interested in that, it's up for sale. And I'm going to put the wheels on Marketplace or something, sell them. So other than that, the rest of it is going to the scrapper. So, I'm going to start this video off with a disclaimer. If you came here looking for a tutorial on how to remove a 12-valve Cummins from your daily driver, don't watch this video. This is going to be a salvage operation. Uh, we're going to cut, smash, grab, whatever we got to do to get this thing out because we, like I said, we don't care about the truck. So don't watch this video for that. However, <laughs> if you want to watch a redneck harvest a 12 valve to beat flat rate and uses fancy cordless saws all and all the other tools at his disposal, well, grab you a beverage and a snack and sit back and relax. So, what we're going to start with, as crazy as it sounds, is these Caterpillar lights. For some reason, Chad has taken a liking to them. That's the first thing you noticed on this truck, so we're going to give them to him. Much as I would love to uh, bolt them on cream puff, I think it'd be hilarious. I, I can't do that to his rig. So, I'm going to take them off there, give them to him. And he can do whatever he likes wants with them. I'm sure there'll be some jackassery involved. Hopefully I'll never video it to show it to you. So lights are coming off. I'm gonna take the hood off and just start pitching parts. So cue the montage. Here we go. Chad I even saved the uh, washers for you because you're so proud of them. These are going in your truck. There's no bulbs in the headlights. Okay, we had a slight interruption there. Rocket Man decided it was time to come get his Cherokee. So, we got that loaded onto the trailer and dodged back in the shop, back to the carnage.
I'll keep the radiator hoses just as a sample. Uh, when we go to put it in the truck, it would be nice to be able to use the Dodge truck parts. That way, no matter where we are, towing the wheel and rigs, if I got to stop in a parts store at Buzzard Droppings, Arizona, then pretty good chance they'll have a 95 Dodge Ram radiator hose. Rather than trying to explain to the guy at said parts store that we have an 82 Chevy with a Cummins turbo diesel. You don't know how that worked out. Okay, let's do the hoses first. to it, make sure my theory is right that this thing should still run, which it should still run. I don't know about the transmission. Hopefully the transmission will pull it enough and we'll load this thing on the trailer, take it to work because there is a steam cleaner there that I can use because this thing is filthy and go from there. So let's get the tools off of it, zip tie some stuff that's in the way and see if it's going to run. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to take a minute work on this menagerie here because while I'm going to need all this stuff for the swap, I shouldn't need it to run it long enough to get it on a trailer and get it cleaned off. So I'm going to take this thing down to where it's just a bare battery cable tie up this stuff but we'll tape it up real nice Jump box is at 91%. We had to use it to winch Rocket Man's ride up onto the trailer. Should be enough to tell us what we need to know. Whether or not this is going to work. on starter wire contact better yet let's shut the fuel off for a moment just see if it's going to crank nope Room, room. She might need an actual battery to start. 
So there you have it. The jump box isn't going to be enough. Um, unfortunately, we broke the freaking battery cables. And I think this is kind of a good place to leave you anyway. Because I want you to tune in next week. So I'm going to leave you hanging. This thing going to start? Or did I just turn this running, driving ish truck into a total piece of crap that now I got to figure out how to get on the trailer? You decide. Better yet, we'll make it interesting. Leave it down in the comments. Battery on it, is it going to fire? Or not? Is it going to run it? Is it going to move? I don't know. We'll find out together. The only way you're going to find out, you're going to have to watch Rico's Garage next week. So give me a like or a dislike, depending on which way you go. Subscribe if you want to see more of this, because there's going to be plenty more coming. And share it with anybody that you think it might help. I know this wasn't really a uh, right way to take your 12 valve out, but hopefully you learned a thing or two along the way. There'll be plenty more. This engine's going to come out. We're going to totally rebuild it. And uh, I hope you stick around for that. So, I'll catch you later. It's going to start. You know it is. But I want you to come back next week anyway. Kind of helps the channel grow, you know.